Hi, I'm Dwayne Friend with University of Illinois Extension. What we're going to talk about today are rivers. We're going to talk a little bit about how rivers form. We're going to show how a river forms. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the landforms that rivers create. We're also going to talk a little bit about floods and flooding. So before we get into all of that, what you see right here is something that we're going to pretend is a place, as a landscape, that doesn't have any rivers. Now, do you ever think there was a time in Illinois when there weren't a lot of rivers and streams? Well, if you said yes, you'd be right. And that's because of ice ages and glaciers. Over the last couple million years, there have been dozens of ice ages with these huge sheets of ice moving into Illinois and parts of the Midwest. In fact, if you would have been living here 18,000 years ago, depending on where you're at on, in Illinois, you may have been standing on up to 1,000 feet of ice. Now, to give you an idea of how tall that is, next time you're outside, find the tallest tree that you can find, and then imagine about 30 of those trees standing on top of each other. That would be about 1,000 feet. Now, as that ice slowly moved along, it took the rock, it took the soil that was there, and it ground it up, and then when the ice melted, it just laid it down in a relatively flat surface. The other thing that the ice did as it moved along is if there were any rivers in place, once the ice moved over that area, those rivers got covered up. So every time there was an ice age, those rivers and streams that had been there would be gone, and then new rivers and streams would have to form. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on the water. We're going to let a river form in this material. It'll take a little bit of time for that to happen, but we'll talk about some things while that's going on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show how a river forms. And one of the things I want to point out before the river forms, if you can see this area right down here where this water is flowing, have you ever heard of something called spring water? Or when you get those bottles of water, have you seen that it said spring water on it? If you wondered what they're talking about with spring water, this is an example. If you can see where this water is coming out right here. So what happens is as water moves down through the soil like this is doing here and like what would naturally happen during, after a rain, that water is still going to move downhill or down the slope. And one of the things that can happen is that water can seep out down at the bottom of the hill. And that is where you would find a spring in a lot of cases. So when you hear the term spring water, that is what they're talking about. Now I'm going to turn up the water just a little bit. And as our river starts to form, I'm going to talk about a couple other things that's happening while that's taking place. Now you're going to start to see this eroding back, and that's one way that a river will start to form over time and get longer, is by this type of erosion here. It's called headward erosion, and it'll slowly work its way back, and that's one way that a river will get longer over time. Now here in just a little bit, that, water, that channel will form for the river, and you're going to notice that it starts out relatively narrow, but it's going to get wider and deeper, and that's the same thing that a real river will do over time. So we're just going to watch this, and this will start to form here in just a few more seconds. So you need to watch closely and watch how that channel forms here in just a, a little bit longer. And there it goes. Notice how it's getting wider and deeper as time moves on. Now what we're showing here would happen over thousands and thousands of years. Now you can see how that water is moving through, how it's moving that soil very quickly. And so that's how our river would form. Now over time, that river is going to change. And it's going to create a couple of landforms that we can talk about, which we're going to talk about next. So the first landform that I'm going to talk about, you can see right along the edges of the river, if you can see this little flat area alongside the river. On a real river, like the Illinois or the Mississippi River, that may actually be several miles wide next to the river. And that type of landform right along there on either side is called a floodplain. A plain is just a flat area of land, and then we've added the word flood ahead of it. And again, you'll find floodplains on many different rivers, but you notice right now it's staying dry along there. And most floodplains do throughout most of the year. There may be trees growing on that floodplain. There may be crops growing on that floodplain because it's very fertile soil. But if we get a lot of snowmelt or we get a lot of rainfall, 
and the river can't hold all of that water, let's see what happens to the floodplain itself. So as the water is getting higher in the river, you can see that that floodplain on both sides is covered. And that's what's going to happen with real floodplains if they're not protected. Now when you look at real rivers, they're typically not in a perfectly straight line. They get curves in them and they bend. That's something that a natural river does and that's kind of nature's way of slowing the river down so you don't have as much erosion taking place. The faster water moves, the more soil it's going to carry away with it. But with those curves in the river, that slows the water down and so you don't have as much erosion taking place. Sometimes though, people have tried to change where rivers go and that's what we're going to talk about next. Now this next thing that I'm going to talk about doesn't happen very often these days, but in the past when there would be curves in the river and someone didn't like a curve being there for whatever reason, sometimes they would come in and they would actually dig out a new channel and make that part of the river straight. Now that's going to make a couple of things happen there. First of all, if you straighten the river out, we said just a little bit ago that if, the, if you have a curve in the river that slows the water down, if you take the curve out, that's going to make the water go faster. And so you're going to have more erosion taking place. The other thing that occurs is since we've got a newly dug channel here, you're not going to have something along the stream banks that would maybe keep soil in place. What kind of tall things grow along stream banks? Trees, right. The roots from those trees would help keep that soil in place and not allow that stream bank to be eroded. But if you've just dug out this channel, the trees are not going to be there. The channel is also in a straight line and so the water is going to move very fast. And so you're going to have a lot of erosion along those stream banks. So I'm going to turn on the water again to here in just a second and we're going to see what happens to this straightened channel. Now you can see the water moving very fast. You're seeing lots of soil just sloughing off into that channel and it's getting wider very quickly so you're getting huge amounts of erosion taking place and unfortunately the tractor fell in. But you can see what happens if you try to straighten out a river. You get lots of erosion and if what that river is going to try to do is it's going to try to get back into a curved form so that water will slow down. Now the next thing we're going to do is show what a river will do all by itself. So now we've got a more natural curve in our rivers. We've got two curves in here. We've got a small curve and we've got a big curve. If you ever look at a river and notice how it flows, you'll always see that the deepest and the fastest water is always along the outside part of the curve. That's where you have the most erosion and that's what makes the curve grow out more. Over time though, a curve gets so big that nature has a way of stopping that erosion from happening. And once a curve gets so big, the water is no longer flowing very fast. It's actually flowing kind of slowly. But what we'll see in this case is we're going to see a lot of erosion occur on this first curve, this first little curve. The water is going to slow down and move much more slowly through this big curve and on around. Now what this is going to demonstrate is something that a real river would do on its own. Again, it would take a very long time for the river to do that, probably hundreds or even thousands of years. And I'm going to turn on the water, we're just going to let it run for a little bit, and we'll see what changes occur in the river. Now, it might be kind of hard to see from this angle, but you're getting a lot of erosion occurring on this first outside curve, and the water is moving very fast, but you can see how much slower the water is moving through this big curve and on around. We're just going to let this run for a few seconds and we're going to see a big change in the river here in just a, a little bit. Now again, this is something that a real river would do on, the, on its own. The Mississippi River has done this dozens of times because the Mississippi River is a very old river. You really don't see this on the Illinois River because the Illinois River is not very old because remember with those glaciers, it hasn't been around nearly as long as what the Mississippi River has been. And you can see what has happened the river changed its course. So what happened was it found a new course to go and so what we have left off to the side now is a U-shaped lake 
a river, kind of like the shape of a horseshoe. Have you ever heard of a horseshoe lake? Well, that's what this is, and that's how they actually form. Sometimes they're also called an oxbow lake. But it just happens when the curve gets really big in a river, and eventually that river will find a new course. And it leaves that oxbow or horseshoe lake along the side of it. If you looked at the Mississippi River, you would see dozens of these horseshoe lakes along the side of it. And in fact, if you live anywhere near Collinsville, Illinois, there's a state park down there called Horseshoe Lake State Park. And that Horseshoe Lake is actually where the Mississippi River once flowed thousands of years ago. So for this last section, I'm going to talk a little bit about floods and flooding. Now, if you remember, just a little bit ago, we showed those floodplains, those flat areas of land next to the river that can be miles wide along the river. And sometimes those areas are used for cropland. Well, let's say we've got a river and we've got a floodplain that has some crops in it. But this time, we don't want the water to get out into the floodplain. What can we do to stop that from happening? So if this is our river, what can we do to stop water from going out in the floodplain? Well, the answer that people have come up with is something called a levee. A levee is a wall of soil placed alongside the river so that when the water gets higher, instead of going out into the floodplain, it's kept in close to where the river is at. We've got thousands and thousands of miles of levees in Illinois and throughout the Midwest. And it, they do a very good job of flood control. They keep that water in close to the river. Now, once in a while, though, when a flood lasts for a very long period of time, something can happen to a levee. And that's what we're going to demonstrate next. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pretend that this is our levee next to the river. This section is going to be the river itself. And then this section down here will be the floodplain that we're trying to protect. When I turn on the water, I want you to watch what happens. Now again, this does not happen very often at all with levees, but it does once in a while when the water stays up for a very long period of time. And the reason is because of the materials that are used in a levee. Levees are not made like a dam is for a, to hold back water for a lake or a pond. With, a, with those things, with a dam, you're holding back water all the time. So they have to use materials that will not allow any water to seep through. A levee, on the other hand, is only meant to work for a few days or a few weeks out of the year. So it's only holding water back for a short period of time. Now again, levees usually do their job very well. This happens very rarely, but it does happen once in a while. And I'm going to turn on the water, and we're going to show what, what potentially happens on rare occasions. Okay, so we've got our river over here. This is what can happen sometimes. You see that water seeping out at the bottom of the levee? If they don't stop that, which they can if they find it soon enough, but if they cannot stop that, the levee will actually fail from the back. And this is what they have to look for sometimes with flooding to make sure that the levees are still protecting those floodplains. So we're gonna let this run for a little bit and you're gonna see what eventually can happen to that levee if that leakage is not stopped. You're seeing how it's failing from the back. Well, we'll just let the water run for a little bit and we'll see what the end result is. So again, this doesn't happen very often, but it does happen once in a while. And the thing to know about this is once that water runs through, imagine a levee that's maybe 10 or 12 feet high. The water may be running through there at 20 or 30 miles an hour. That may not sound very fast, but that's moving very fast. It can actually dig out holes 10 to 12 feet deep into the ground. Depending on how big that break is, all of that dirt that it was carrying with it goes out into the floodplain and gets deposited out there. Now, in some cases, they can just take that, that soil that was deposited and kind of spread it out and continue to farm those areas. On other hand, uh, 
certain situations. When that soil gets deposited there, and if it's big dunes of sand, for example, they may not be able to, to continue to farm that land, and it may be too expensive to try to reclaim that land for farming. So it may have to revert back to timber or something like that. Now, this doesn't happen very often, but you have probably have seen maybe some videos in the past, or you can go online and see some videos of some levees that have broken in the Midwest and in Illinois in the last several flooding periods. So that concludes this video. Some of the main takeaways I hope that you get from this is that rivers form slowly over time. When they do form, they form with curves or meanders. And the fastest flowing river is usually on the outside part of a curve. And it's not good to straighten out a river because that causes lots of erosion. So with that, again, my name is Dwayne Friend, and hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you.